Uh, welcome to the third and final part of this little mini-series uh, revisiting uh, occluders uh, from the videos that I did about a year ago. Uh, so let's uh, get another uh, image uh, in here. Let's pick this one. And uh, this, um, this is more a kind of um, video of techniques rather than uh, anything else. So the first thing I wanted to point out uh, is uh, too many occluders. And so I've drawn occluders around this little bit of uh, this uh, cave system here. And uh, I've, as you can see, I kind of zoomed right in and I've uh, put an occluder point at every little uh, nook and cranny in this uh, uh, area here. Now, this is too many occluders uh, and having too many occluders uh, will have an impact on performance, especially on bigger maps or with a lot of tokens, uh, a lot of light and all that kind of thing, then th this will uh, have an impact um, depending on your connections, your machines, graphics card, all sorts of different things, but it can have uh, an impact. So uh, there is a tool now uh, which you can use, which is a, a new tool that uh, has come in over the last 12 months. Uh, and this allows for the reduction of the number of occluders that, uh, that have, have been drawn, but still retain the uh, necessary occluders to occlude this uh, area here. So what we need to do is we need to, first of all, uh, make sure that we're in the select mode and just double click on a point. Uh, and that will select uh, all of these uh, points here. And as you can see, uh, we've got a little pop-up uh, here, a pop-up tool, simplify selected occluders. Uh, and we've got a little button to press. And when we uh, click on this, uh, if we watch carefully, you can see that the number of occluders um, that have gone in onto this uh, thing here has reduced substantially. Uh, and we can click it, I think, one more time here and again, more occluders have been re removed. And so we can see that a, quite a substantial number of occluders uh, have been removed from uh, this area while still retaining uh, the shape uh, and uh, all the line of sight and whatever. So we didn't need that many occluders we can do without, uh, without them. Uh, if we uh, take out too many, we can uh, press Control and Z to uh, recover them. But you can see that this is what we started with here. Uh, and uh, if we uh, click another couple of times, this is what we uh, finalized with. So that a considerable number of occluders uh, have been removed. So if you find uh, that uh, one of your maps is a bit slow, uh, then it may be because there are too many occluders on it. Uh, you can come in here and uh, simplify the selected occluders. Now, just one thing uh, which is probably useful to point out whilst we're here, as you can see, this this line here is maybe not just great, um, and I, not, not something I mentioned in previous videos, but if you select a point uh, here, you can then uh, drag that point. So we could tidy this up a little bit by clicking there and then dragging this one, and that it uh, makes it uh, all nice again. Um, so, I mean, just to demonstrate it, if you select everything, you can actually then move this whole thing. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll not do that too much. Um, but you can tidy up. If, if the remove occluders removes just too many for your own liking, you, you can then select individual points and you can uh, move them around or you can control Z to uh, put them back. Uh, now, another thing um, which um, comes up quite often in the uh, forums and in Discord and things like that, and that is how close the occluders are drawn to the actual um, wall uh, and whether or not uh, the token should be able to see uh, into the wall. So, as you can see in this area here, I've drawn these occluders very close to the edge of the wall. And if we uh, put a token on uh, the map and uh, switch on all our uh, line of sight and lighting, etc., uh, and we go to the player's view, um, you can see that despite the fact that the occluders have been drawn more or less right up against the base of the wall, the token can still actually see through the occluder a little bit. Um, now, I believe uh, they can see through like about 5% 
um, depending the five percent of the of the pixel width. So if if you've got 50 pixels or something like that, then they'll see something like two and a half pixels through the actual occluder. So depending on how many pixels there are per um, grid uh, on your map, uh, they may see more or, or less through. So the, uh, even with the occluders hard up against the wall uh, like that, the uh, token should still be able to see a little way through the occluder and should be able to pick up that this is a cave wall and you can see here that in this particular one um, if we switch back to the uh, occluders again uh, and switch off uh, all of this stuff uh, we can see that the occluders are pretty hard up against the wall but the token is actually able to see through it uh, a little bit um, now that uh, if you want to uh, show more than that then obviously just move the occluders uh, further back from the uh, wall so we've done that and we'll have to hold down shift uh, we've done that up in this area here where if we look at the occluders here then i've placed them much further back from the edge of the wall uh, than uh, I, than in the previous example um, and if we switch all this on now and look at the player view, then it's much clearer uh, what the cave walls are, where the cave walls uh, are, and you can see a bit more of the map. So it's entirely up to you. I've been kind of tending towards this technique in uh, later modules that I've developed um, rather than putting them hard up against the wall. But a lot will depend on the depth of the wall as well. That if you've got a very thin wall then it can be difficult uh, to um, achieve this because you won't have so much room for maneuver. But in this kind of case where it's a cave um, then you can easily afford to have the occluders further back from the actual base of the wall. And also, um, if we look at that again, uh, if we take the player's view off uh, and take all the lighting and lighting in sight, etc. Um, if, we, if we look at the occluders, there's not many of them. That is one of the other th benefits of this. We haven't bothered to, we haven't zoomed right in and done all the nooks and crannies on the cave walls. It isn't necessary to do that. So that's just a, a couple of techniques that you, you might want to uh, employ uh, when you're uh, thinking about drawing your occluders on your maps. Um, one occluder type that I uh, haven't recovered in, uh, covered in previous videos is the uh, terrain occluder. And we've got, um, this map's not really particularly good, but we have got a pile of rubble here, um, which um, wouldn't block uh, movement because the uh, players can or the tokens can climb over the, the rubble, but it would block the line of sight. And this is where the terrain uh, occluder uh, comes into its own, um, because the terrain occluder allows a token to see into uh, the area, but not out of uh, the area, unless the token is actually in the uh, occluder itself, in which case it can see uh, out uh, of it. So. We'll have a brief look at this and you can see again that we've got the trim interior uh, is greyed out by default here so you can switch that on if you need to. Um, but we'll just d draw a quick piece of terrain here and we're just going to follow uh, the lines that, that um, are already on this map. We're just going to uh, click on the wall icons here so that it all uh, merges and butts up nicely and uh, yeah we'll just finish it there. Um, so if we go to our uh, play mode again and uh, we get our token back on and switch on all our lighting and so forth, um, we can see that the token is still able to see into this area. It can see uh, this pile of rubble is actually a pile of rubble, but it can't see beyond it. this area here uh, is blocking the player's uh, vision. Um, but once the token moves onto the pile of rubble, uh, it can then see into this next room. It can still see into the room previously. And then once it goes all the way into this room beyond the rubble, again, it's not able to see uh, into this room again because uh, the rubble is in the way and it can fully see uh, this room. And uh, again, as you notice, when we mouse over, we can uh, 
the dungeon master can toggle this on or off and once we toggle it off um, the token can see both ways essentially um, one other brief thing on uh, this map here and it, it is a kind of uh, a problem with um, uh, sort of three-dimensional uh, things happening, uh, especially elevation, etc., um, on two-dimensional maps. So we've got a bridge here, and uh, as you can see, this this pathway leads uh, under the bridge and come all the way around here, and then you come onto the bridge. And this is a different uh, elevation from the uh, from the pathway. So it's kind of difficult to uh, kind of work this uh, in any kind of meaningful uh, fashion, but you can use terrain. Uh, for example, here um, there's a staircase, so we could uh, uh, get our line. We could uh, put terrain pieces uh, in here. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't picked the right thing. We need to pick a terrain. Let's get rid of that. Uh, Get rid of that. Uh, the terrain tool. Um, we can use uh, terrain here to uh, kind of sort out the staircase because the uh, the players will be able to come up here and not be able to see the top of the staircase. And one possible uh, method of dealing with the bridge would be to make uh, it a toggleable uh, window. Um, we can uh, just draw the lines along here. Um, when the players are coming up in this direction, uh, we, the dungeon master, could uh, let's turn on the line of sight. Uh, the dungeon master can uh, toggle these off to allow movement around here, then toggle them back on again. Um, it's it's not great, but it is a per, uh, a possibility for um, kind of working on things so that the terrain is you get a sense of the three-dimensional uh, bit of the terrain. Uh, right, I think that's it. Um, if there's anything else you'd like to know about uh, terrain or anything like that, we'd like to see another video covering some aspect of it that I haven't covered in these uh, last three, let me know in the comments below. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.